Welcome to our simulation of a standard theater rigging system. This rigging system happens to be a single purchase counterweight system, which means that for every foot that the batten moves down, an equal amount of weight on an arbor moves up the same distance. It works exactly like a seesaw. When one side goes down, the other side goes up, and the objective is to balance the weight on both sides so it can easily be moved up and down. Before we go on to show you the steps of safe operation, let's take a moment to review the pieces of the system. Right now, up in the air, we have our battens. Battens tend to be made from pipe and are used to hold the lights or the scenery or anything else we might want to raise and lower on the stage. The battens are attached to cable, which by function is called lift lines. This batten happens to have two lift lines on it. A larger batten would have considerably more lift lines, up to perhaps seven. Holding our rigging system is a structure called the gridiron, up at the top of the theater. And on the gridiron you will see two pulleys for raising each batten. Again, larger battens will have more pulleys on them. We don't call these pulleys. Our word for pulley is block. And the block that's above the batten is called a loft block because it's in the loft of the theater. So we have the batten. We have the cable lift lines attached to the batten that go over the loft block. And since we have two lift lines going over loft blocks, the next block has to be a little larger and has to hold all the lift lines as well as an operating line. So this is called the head block. And if we trace our lift lines farther, you can see that they attach to what is called an arbor. The arbor holds the counterweight, which balances whatever we would put onto the bat. Right now you'll see some red counterweight and that represents the weight of the batten itself. Any additional weights to balance the scenery or lighting can be added on top of this, but we wouldn't want to remove the red weight or else the batten would have nothing to balance it. It's easy now to be able to control the batten by controlling the arbor. Since it works just like a seesaw, if we lower the arbor, it raises the batten. And if we raise the arbor, the batten lowers. So it becomes a matter of how we raise the arbor. And we raise it by a loop of rope called the operating line or the purchase line. Since it's a loop, we have a front component and a rear component. And we also have a rope lock to keep it immobilized, which helps hold both the arbor and the batten in place. If we were to pull down, on the front purchase line, it pulls over the head block and it lifts the batten up from the top. If we pull down on the rear operating line, it simply pulls the arbor back down again. Remember, like on a seesaw, when the arbor goes down, the batten goes up, and when the arbor goes up, the batten goes down. Okay, let's take you through the stages. It's very meticulous and things have to happen in the correct order. There are a few more parts which we'll go into as we see them work. Uh, two of these are critical at this moment. We have our rope lock and before we move the arbor up or down, we have to make sure the lock is off. And then we secure the rope in the system by putting the lock back on. You'll see one more block down below and that is the tension block, which just keeps the loop nice and with tension so that you can operate it very easily. Okay, let's get ready to lower our batten so we can put scenery on it. And the first step would be to remove the lock. Okay, so now if we pull down on the front purchase line, the arbor will go up and the batten should go down. And there you see how it works like a seesaw. Before we do any more, we want to be sure to immobilize the line. 
So we will lock the arbor, we will lock the line set, as it's called. Okay, and now it is time to load the scenery onto the batten. Here our system is automated. Woo! So there goes the scenery. And in true cartoon fashion, our scenery weighs one ton. Now there would be no hope for me to be able to lift it by pulling down on the arbor because I would have to lift a ton of weight. So all we have to do is add weight onto the arbor to balance what we have on the batten or one ton of weight. And this is why we have a catwalk way up high so that it's even with the arbor when the batten is being worked on. This is called the loading gallery. And the reweighting of the arbor happens at the loading gallery. Here you could see a ton of weight ready to go on to the arbor. Now the system is balanced again. We have one ton of weight on the arbor, one ton of weight on the batten. It is all fully balanced. So now we can remove the lock. And now by pulling down on the rear rope, it will raise the batten up into the air for a plane position. We have to be sure always again to lock the purchase line so that nothing can fall on our performers or on the crew for that matter. And now it's ready to play. The show is over and it's ready to strike. First we unlock the line set. So we can bring the, we can bring the arbor back uh, up and the batten back down to be able to strike. Okay. So again, as the scenery goes down, the arbor goes up, so it's ready to have the weight balance. Now we get to a very serious issue. The question is, which do we do first? Do we take the scenery off or do we take the weight on the arbor off first? Think back to when you were a child on the playground with your older brother and on a seesaw. If you were up in the air, and your brother was down on the ground on the seesaw, you should know by now it would be very dangerous if he got off the seesaw. Because you're up in the air ready to fall down and hurt yourself. Of course, that's exactly what your older brother wanted. We have the same situation here, but our seesaw might be eight stories high. So if we were to take the weight off the batten first, that would leave an unbalanced ton of counterweight, eight stories in the air, ready to fall and kill one or more people. So you always have to remove the weight that's high up in the air first. If you remove that weight first that's on the arbor, you will indeed be heavy on the pipe side, but this weight is already on the floor. It has nowhere to fall. The only danger comes from a ton of weight sitting eight stories above everyone's head. So that's what you have to get rid of first. You have to get rid of what's dangerous first. So let's unload the arbor first before we strike the scenery. Okay, now again, it's out of balance, but the scenery is already on the floor. There's nowhere for it to fall. And there we go system is all locked and we can now go have a beer. We have two more safety things to discuss in order to work this safely. The first is where I'm standing during this process is not always a particularly safe place. What would happen if the person loading the arbor were to drop a weight they tend to weigh about 35 pounds, and falling eight stories not only could it kill people underneath, but after an eight-story drop, 
that weight could bounce very far. So the safest place to stand when an arbor is being loaded or unloaded is at least halfway across the stage. And you have to make sure that no one enters into the space underneath where the waiting has happened. It's so tragic when people get hurt from falling stage weights because accidents will happen. And now we have to review the larger issue, that old teeter-totter seesaw question of which you strike first from a system. The scenery and lighting, which would be on the batten, or would you strike the weight from the arbor first? Remember, the dangerous weight is the weight on the arbor. So that's what you would want to strike first in all instances. But what would happen if someone were to take off the weight on the scenery, on the bat first? Not only would all the weight and the arbor fall at fast speed down to the floor, but all sorts of things can go wrong, especially if the system has not been properly maintained or properly installed or properly run. Here's what can happen in the worst case scenario. If the batten, when the runaway arbor occurs, rushes up to the grid and reaches the grid before the arbor reaches down the bottom, the force on the lift lines can be so great that they can actually snap. So the first danger is from the quickly falling arbor with maybe a ton or more of weight on it. The next danger is that the lines could snap and the batten will fall down. Now, if the system has been installed correctly, there are certain safety measures that would prevent the lift lines from breaking. You can't assume always that it has been installed correctly. Then, when the arbor reaches the bottom at great speed, if the arbor has not been rigged properly, the pipe that connects the top of the arbor with the bottom of the arbor can bend, and the weights can now fly off of it and act as 35-pound shrapnel, taking anyone out that might be standing within the stage area. And last, after the pipe falls from the broken lift lines, the lift lines, which break like they're under tension like a rubber band, can go snaking through the whole system, cutting apart anything in its path, including human flesh. Trust me, you do not want to have a situation with a runaway arbor. I'm going to demonstrate to you pretty graphically what would happen if I take apart the system by removing the weight at the ground before I remove the weight at the air. Ready to remove the scenery? And of course, I'm not standing in a great place, but let's do it anyway. Here we go. You can imagine tons of weight that could actually fall on you. Trust me, you do not want a runaway arbor.